Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's jasonnewland.com and this is let me bore you to sleep.com. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Dot com and dot com. If you're watching on YouTube.com, please also only watch this video when you can safely close your eyes. Dot com. Um, and also please subscribe. Dot com. That seemed like a good idea when I first started it. I know what I'll do. I'll say dot com at the end of every every little sentence. That'll be hilarious. Uh, so welcome to another of these very, very boring, boring recordings. Very, very very boring and it's supposed to be boring it's supposed to be calming loose loosening uh, just yeah boring let me bore you to sleep and this is I think a hundred and three I do believe Oh, just drop the phone. So, yesterday's episode of this thing, I talked about and read out uh, some of the comments and messages that have been left on my Facebook. Uh, also some a few comments that have been left on my YouTube channel you know, over the last couple of months and I imagine it was very 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 boring and time really went quickly I ended up doing like an hour and ten minutes when I really try to aim at about an hour so today I'm going to do about 55 minutes instead just to make up for that extra 10 minutes that I did yesterday over although it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Who's taking notes? You know, I can't imagine anyone's taking notes of or keeping track of the lengths of, you know, that I'm doing. It's not, yeah. Length? That's not the right word, is it? That'd be a swimming, a swimming term. How many lengths have you done? Strokes? How many strokes did you know that? No, maybe that's a different thing. Yeah, that's swimming, isn't it, as well? As, as well as, you know. Uh, well, it could be medical as well, couldn't it? As well as. Uh, who knows what so yeah right getting back onto the onto the subject of something else today has been a weird day or weird like not spooky like Halloween weird and trust me Halloween was extremely weird last year for me 
It was a uh, heck of a weird one. So, not just for me, but the whole area, because something quite big happened here. I won't go into it, but it's, uh, it's, I'll never, it's something I'm always going to remember. And today probably isn't something I'm always going to remember. It's not really been a memorable day. And cause I, I woke up. I often do that. I've woken up nearly every day of my life. And what time did I go to bed? Because I, I do, I'm, I'm kind of in that mode of sleeping or being awake at night, but not all night. If that makes sense. So I'm pretty sure I was in bed by about three o'clock, I think. And I do like I do like going to bed. But not always uh, I don't always like it. You know, sometimes I don't particularly want to go to bed because there's things that I want to do or maybe there's uh, a film that I want to watch or a television program that I want to watch or maybe maybe I kind of had the urge to make a recording or do some online research um, yep, that's what I call it. I call it research. Other people may call it something else. But online research. I'm thinking of applying for a psychology master's degree at the local university, which would start in, I suppose, September yeah, probably to September, and it would be full time for a year, and it would cost, I think it cost about seven and a half thousand pound, so I'd have to get a loan to do it, a student loan. But it would be kind of like a conversion, a conversion, um, not conversion therapy, that's a very different thing all together. Uh, I don't mean all say it after me. And what it means really is that at the end of it I will have, I'll be able to have membership of the UK psychological society I kind of made that bit up but it's it's the it's the main psychological society which you need to be a, a member of before you can go on and work as a psychiatrist or psychologist or trainee psychologist you know and once I've got that training once I've you know got the masters I could then on become an assistant psychologist and maybe go on and do a, uh, you know, a PhD and become a psychologist. Uh, what do they call them? Clinical psychologist. So I'd be, I'd have a doctorate, and I think, I think, I think, I think, there's, I might be able to, I think once you do that, you can, I'm sure you can train, do another year, or even do something where you can then, 
you'd be allowed to prescribe medication because I know some nurses can prescribe medication it, so it's I don't know what I don't even know if I want to do that stuff to be fair it's I don't know I started thinking sort of financially because my finances have been a little bit of a struggle just just the last week or so and because everything's gone up everything that I'm because I've made so many recordings uh, like with Spreaker I pay um, there's what one two three four five levels I think with Spreaker I think the first level is free which you can have like five hours of audio and then the second level you can have maybe a hundred hours then the third level so the second level costs maybe uh, seven pound a month maybe ten pound a month the third level allows you to have 500 hours and that is like 19 pound a month something like that I'm make I'm kind of making it up a little bit but I'm just I'm guessing rather than making it up and then the next one 500 is uh, 1500 hours which is the one that I'm on and that's 49 yeah it's 49 dollars a month and the one after that is about a hundred dollars a month and that gives you unlimited so I hit the because I've got over 500 hours worth of audio on my podcasts which is quite a lot really isn't it I suppose if you think about it and um, not quite sure how much I've got I think it's under under a thousand but it's getting on to a thousand hours and the it was a case of either deleting some of my stuff from the podcasts or paying for the the higher membership so I, they gave me a discount a 30% discount on the higher membership so it should be something like $49 instead it's 36 or I'm not sure but they gave me 30% discount for I don't know how long for and that will give me 150 hours now every week I'm probably producing five six seven at least five hours every week probably more sometimes it'd be ten hours sometimes it'll maybe be less but at least five hours every week so I imagine it won't be long before I'll have to upgrade to the higher level which will then be a hundred dollars a month just for the podcasts that's without all the other stuff that you know money to pay out it's like wow that's it's quite weird because this the SoundCloud podcast which I've got only costs me 10 pounds a month and it's unlimited I can have as many sessions on there and I have I've got just under uh, it's 900 and something recordings I've got on my SoundCloud and there's no limit and they're all on there 
The thing is, when you've got a, a podcast, let's say iTunes, for example. So my SoundCloud is on iTunes, as well as the Spreaker ones as well. So let's say my, my SoundCloud one, which is just Jason Newland Free Hypnosis. It's on the iTunes podcast, but there's only 250 episodes on there with the latest ones at the top. So the only way you're going to see the other, was it 250, 350, 450, 550, 650, 750, 850, 950. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, about 700 recordings you won't get to have access to with that podcast as it is on iTunes. However, if you go to the podcast, and it's the same podcast, it's the, it's basically it's the RSS feed that you send, that you, you add to uh, iTunes, and they take the feed and they update it whenever you add a new recording. And this is way more boring than I intended it to be. And um, so if you go to the SoundCloud page or the SoundCloud podcast, all 950 or whatever it is, recordings are still there. So what I did, and this is part of the reason why I had the Spreaker podcast. I'm just going to have a quick drink. I started thinking, well, you know what? Realistically, let's be realistic. And this is back when I had about 800 recordings. So that'll make more sense because I'll be talking about 800. I remember thinking to myself, you know what, Juicy JJ? You've got 800 recordings here. Although that will one day be probably about 950. But for now, let's just focus on 800 because that's where we are at at this point. And iTunes only shows 250, the last, or the latest 250. So unless people actually go to the SoundCloud podcast, how are they going to know about all the other recordings? Because some of that stuff's pretty good, you know. There's there's probably, probably some awful stinkers there as well, but, you know, there's some good stuff. It's it's all dependent upon what you like, I suppose. But there's some useful recordings and some quite. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, there's there's a see. Not all not all of the older recordings were very good sound wise. You know, the sound quality was not brilliant but the quality of the content in a lot of the earlier sessions was good and also um, I think it could be interesting to go back in time and you can get an idea of the kind of stuff that I used to do. Uh, I suppose in some ways, in some ways you could say that perhaps I was 
more focused back then in a kind of a way in a sense of I didn't used to do this kind of stuff you know um, I didn't necessarily know exactly what it was that I was going to talk about but sometimes I did sometimes I knew I thought you know what I'm going to do a recording I'm going to make a video uh, a relaxation video that's what this is going to be about this is going to be about relaxation and then I would sit in front of the video camera and I would press record I try and do it as I speak I'm thinking of this particular place that I lived at that time and see my room as you went into the house because it was uh, not a bungalow but we'll do it like a cottage I always get muddled up between cottages and bungalows and uh, the men and women's toilets I guess sometimes I get muddled up and used to go into the front because there was a, there was a, a driveway at the, the, the front of the cottage and the whole cottage was surrounded by flowers and a garden that was that the lady who was my landlady at that time was a she absolutely loved the garden and doing gardening and making it beautiful so that was sort of her passion so there was lots of flowers and everything all the way around so there was a driveway where there's probably enough enough room for two cars comfortably side not side you know side by side not side by you know side by side so like you could drive on to the you know forward or I suppose you could back back on and there was a green car. I remember one of the cars was green. My landlord's car was green. And I think my landlady used to call his car Kermit. Because it had uh, legs. In fact, it was actually a frog. It wasn't a car at all. It was a frog. And her husband used to ride on the back of it that's not true so it was green and she called it Kermit and we used to I, I used to go through and there used to be a gap between the two cars and you could get through usually depending I suppose uh, when they were parking depends on how drunk they were when they were parking not really just joking and um could get through open the gate and walk through walk round you couldn't actually see you could see the front door but I never went into the front door in fact I don't think I even had the keys to the front door I had a key to the back door which led into the kitchen so although I might have had a key to the front door I wonder if I did. I don't think I did. I think I had two keys. One was to the back door and one was to my room. So I'd walk around this pavement and I'm not quite sure what kind of pavings. I think it's paving slabs, but more, you know, instead of like a big paving slab, it was one of the little broken ones and it was kind of curly not curly as in you walking around in circles and um, not the yellow brick road kind of thing but it went round and then led to the back door and as you go into the back door 
to the right there was a a greenhouse but it wasn't green and it was she had tomatoes in there and she had I don't know if there's anything else in there other than tomatoes or tomato plants it wasn't just wasn't just a big bowl of tomatoes that would have been strange and I remember I used to uh, look after the tomatoes when they went on holiday because sometimes they'd go on holiday and she would say to me uh, Jason and I say yes landlady and she said me and me and the landlord who's also my husband uh, are going to be going away on holiday to a place far away and I'd say okay landlady oh hello landlord because he had walked in actually I didn't see he was actually under the table and he wasn't under the table that's silly he was actually in the greenhouse holding tomatoes the bowl of tomatoes he wasn't I don't know why I'm saying this and I said okay Mrs Landlord uh, how can I help you with your uh, trip a long way away far away she said no far away not long way away it's going to be far away I said okay I kept my patience I just okay fair enough and she said I was wondering if you would please look after the tomatoes for me I thought okay but what would you want me to read bedtime stories what 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 kind of thing do you want me to do a tomato plants you know take them out to the beach buy them an ice cream and she said that's all very silly isn't it I said yes yes Mrs Landlady I'm sorry I'm just just relieved you know it's Friday evening finish college just just glad to get home just want to just chill out now for the weekend you know she said yeah I understand but uh, I have to get up at 4.30 this morning to go and to catch the plane to go far away she says, I said oh she said yeah I said oh she said hmm and I said, what, um, you want me to look after the plants? Because I realised that this conversation was dragging on a bit and I was going to have to need to go to the toilet at some point. And uh, she said, yes, just need to water them every, how often was it? I don't know. And I said, you don't know how often she said no I was just thinking just talking to myself I said okay she said um, probably just once a day will, will do because it is she said just check because this time of the year it's hot but the horror is the the more dried out the plants get I said oh, that makes sense sure I suppose it would because of the heat drying out the the uh, the dirt and she said do you mean compost I said no I didn't really but I suppose that is what you're she said do you, do you think it's just dirt that we use for, for tomatoes which just grows out of dirt out of nothing I said no I don't know I don't really know much about tomatoes they just they're, they're in supermarkets in the fridges you can buy them and that's it she said yeah but there's more to them than that I said okay and she said let me show you something 
I said, okay, well, all right, fair enough. And she went and she bent over. At that point, I got a bit worried. And then she she showed me something. And it was this, it was like a bucket, but with a lid on. Uh, kind of the same kind of, not a tin, but it was like a plastic container that reminded me a little bit like something that you would get paint or emulsion in. But it wasn't metal, it was plastic. See, it's very important for me to tell you that it was plastic. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But she opened up the lid and she said, she said have a smell of that. And I smelt it and it was very pongy. It was one of the, yeah, in the top 10 of bad smells. And I said, what on earth is that? And she said, chicken shit. I said, no, I'm just asking what it is. You don't have to be rude to me. It's like, yeah, I know I'm, she said, I'm crying a little bit, but it's the smell, isn't it? You know, she said, no, it's chicken shit. I said, what? I said, yeah, that's what it is. It is chicken shit. That's, it's the compost we use. And I use that to grow the, the tomato plants. And I just couldn't believe it. That something that smelled that bad could be used to create something so um, red and juicy. I'm not in love with tomatoes. Don't get me wrong. I haven't got some kind of tomato fetish, but they are nice. You know, nice tomato. And these were like the little, the little tomatoes, not the big. I'm not really a big fan of big tomatoes. And don't get me wrong. I don't mind big things. Some things are nice if they're big. I'm quite happy whatever size some things are. But tomato. I look quite like the small tomatoes. The what do they call them? I forget what they're called. But these they weren't so much tiny. Just let you know Andre's making lots of Andre's walked in with his girlfriend. He's collapsed on the floor and now he's just drinking water and he's completely dehydrated himself. And now he's gonna have something to eat. So I ended up looking after the plants, the tomato plants, while they were away. Going back to the tour, so I'd walk into the house. I'm pretty sure the door handle was on the right hand side. I don't know why, I, I kind of remember that. And it was like a double glazing kind of door, I think. I might be wrong, it might have been a wooden door. I really don't, it might be metal. Might be made of fiberglass, I don't know. Might be made of honey and rosebuds. Probably not. And, uh, yeah, as you go into the door, to the left there was a table. And it was like a little eating area. I didn't. I didn't use it because it was for the family because she lived there with her with their daughter and then there was the kitchen and you know but on the right hand side as you go into the kitchen there was the living room 
It's a lovely, lovely little cottage. And I never, never went upstairs, but uh, I think I went into the, I didn't really go into the living room either. I think I sat down in there once with them, I think to watch the boxing. And so it was a nice, nice area. And as I walked through, there is a door, I worked for the door. And I think this bit was an extension, I think. And there was another big table, which was, again, somewhere for everyone to kind of eat and do whatever. On the right-hand side, there was an... Actually, I don't know if this was an extension, because I'm pretty sure it was still cottagey. Um, I'm not an expert on cottaging and cottages. I've not been into that many cottages. Because um, I know some people, well, I, I hear it. Uh, I've heard people being like, oh, he's, he's a cottager, he is. He, go, he goes cottaging. Like, what's wrong with that? With cottages are lovely. You know, we've all we've all got the things that we like to do, and if cottaging is something that you enjoy doing, you know, the very because you think how far back some of those buildings go. They, you know, they go back for years, years and years and years and years. I know the I think they used to have thatched roofs with straw. And such like, um, but I think they probably. I can't imagine you'd find many. I can't. Af- I can't imagine it would be legal to have a a roof with straw. You know, it's oh, Andre's now gone and closed the door, which means he's going to be scratching at the door to get out. Of the door that he's just closed. See, you can hear him now. I don't know why he can't shut up. Just for an hour. Just for an hour. That's all I need him is just to shut up for an hour while I make a recording. And he won't. Is it too much to ask? And now he's trying to get out of the door that he's closed. I didn't really want the door closed. I like I like to have the air circulating through the different rooms. I like to I like it to be airy because I've got the the windows open in the bedroom and I've got the windows open in this room, the living room. And I like the, you know, the air to circulate, just to, yeah, it's just nice, it's a nice thing to do, isn't it, it's it's not an amazing thing to do, it's not that exciting, but it seems like a a fairly good thing to, to have a bit of circulation of air, didn't have that so much in the place I lived before, so this cottage I had a I had a room it's a very very small room just trying to think what size it would have been probably with the bed probably the half the size of this room that room was with the bed and everything 
yeah, probably about half the size. And it was a nice little room, you know, it wasn't big enough to live in. Um, as far as, you know, when I moved in there, I had hundreds and hundreds of books and I had to keep them in plastic boxes because there was nowhere to store them because there was no there was no space for anything really so apart from that it was all right lived with a couple of people a couple of people moved into the other room that was opposite me there was uh, a young female moved in there pretty much a couple of weeks after I moved in and then she moved out and then another female moved in there that was working in the pub I really liked her but she was there for a little bit and then she went and then another female moved in and she was from where was she from she was sort of like I think like an Africa or some kind of uh, a country in that region of the world and I think she was quite young I think she was probably early 20s but she was probably the most petite female adult that I've ever met I mean literally I think I saw her her jeans were being dried on the uh, the radiator and couldn't be, they weren't they were child, children's drink, jeans they weren't adult jeans and so it's very it's just she was a nice girl and she definitely looked like a woman. She didn't look like a girl, like a little girl. She just was that kind of petite frame. And then with adult parts added, if that's, I don't know if that's, that sounds weird, but you wouldn't mistake her for, you, you wouldn't think that she was a child if you saw her. But she's very little, very short, very petite, just probably couldn't have weighed more than about six stone seven stone maybe if that and I was grumpy to her I was I was said hello to her when she first moved in I was trying to be friendly you know just generally but then she used to have she used to have a job and she'd get home late at night and she used to have showers late at night and wake me up my bedroom was right basically the bathroom was between our rooms and I got really grumpy and I started moaning and I told the landlady on her I told her and I said can you tell her to stop doing that because I had to get up early in the morning go to college and all that stuff so I was grumpy so instead of being kind and nice which is something that I would have benefited from it had I been like that. I was a grumpy ass to her. And so we didn't really get to know each other. But she was lovely. It's a really nice person. And I remember seeing her, and this was in the winter, and it was snowing, and it, we had a particularly snowy snow before. And she was making a snowman. She'd never seen the snow before. The first time she'd ever seen snow. And she was all wrapped up and she was making a snowman and you know, you could see her holding, you think she had this big, big white ball in her hands of snow and you think that must be the snowman's head. And then as she walked closer to the snowman, you could see that it was only really the size of a snowball. It was not very big at all, it's just she was so little. And she'd put it on and it would just like add a tiny little bit onto the 
like a finger onto the snowman. And she was so small actually, I noticed this. I thought she was walking on some ice, but it wasn't, it was actually a puddle. But she was so light that she walk, could walk on water. It was quite amazing. And I wanted to go out and see her and maybe help her with the snowman or I don't know. But I didn't because I'd be grumpy with her. And I thought I should just leave her alone because it's, it's, you know, because I've been grumpy and I was a bit embarrassed. And... She was only there for a few weeks, probably maybe a month, four or five weeks. And then she was, there was a van outside and she was packing her stuff up. And I said, what, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm moving out. I said, why, what's, what's going on? And she said, oh, I've got no friends here. I've made no friends, I, got, I don't know anybody. Like in in the country, she literally had just moved from another country, from I don't know Sudan or honestly I don't know where. And I just felt even more guilty as well because I hadn't made much of an effort. And she gave me a big hug goodbye. And I didn't want her to leave because I just I felt quite a connection with her then and I wanted to help her I wanted to I suppose be a friend to her so I I, I was going to say I learnt from that but I probably didn't learn anything from it but I'd like to think that I did learn something if I was in the same situation again I would do things differently I looked after the tomatoes though, so that was alright. There was one one particular time when my landlady and landlord went away on holiday and I decided because I didn't have to work, I didn't have any work at that time I think, and I was on holiday from university. I decided to make use of those 10 days and produce a stop smoking hypnosis course which is what I did I spent I got it all set up in in on the big table in the other room the recording equipment and I got a laptop microphone and everything and what I did is I I think I might have also made a few other like videos each day as well. But I was also watching what was I watching Prison Break. And I watched I think I watched every episode of Prison Break during that those ten days. I watched them back to back. And each episode I'd go and do another hour of recording and then I'd go back and watch another episode of Prison Break. And I go back and do another hour, and I was also editing every single second of the recordings as well, going back, listening to them, changing this bits here and everything. And it's the only time that I've ever done that in the thirteen and a half years or whatever that I've been doing this. It's the only time that I've ever put that much effort into. a course or into any of my audio recordings or videos and I spent many many hours putting that together that course that stop smoking course and it's only it's a 28 stop, 28 day stop smoking and there's four sessions lasting about half an hour each so it's not a lot of time at all really as far as considering how much time it took to produce it it 
took absolutely ages, 10 days. And I've never done anything like that since because it was awful. It was the editing bit that I just, ah, oh, trying to make it so there was no background sound and I just happened to have a windy, a windy week with a rattly door. It's just like, oh. So it was, uh, I think that was 2009. I think that was. 2009. So this, yeah, it's 10 years ago, this, nearly 10 years ago. And I was really pleased with it because I put so much work into it. And I thought, this has got to be popular. And to be fair, it was quite popular for a while. And then what I did is someone said to me, you know what, I listened to the to the recordings back to back. Episode one, episode two, episode three, and episode four. And I fell asleep. And I listened to all of them. And I've not smoked since. And that was, you know, like a year ago or something. So what I thought I'd do is I'd edit the four recordings into one, which is what I did. And it's, what's it called? Stop Smoking and Start Living, I think it's called. So I was, yeah. And the weird thing about it is, well, it's not weird, but on YouTube it's posted someone else posted it on YouTube and it's had a lot of a lot of uh, plays but on my YouTube channel it's probably had hardly any but it has done in the past though so what I did today is because of my finances I posted a thing on Facebook and also on my website just saying you know if anyone would like to help out with the cost of running this free this free service that I do and I had a, a few negative uh, comments and a few negative uh, quite uh, dismissive actions from people so I took it off of Facebook again and took it off my website and I was trying to figure what am I going to do because tomorrow I've got all this money coming out of my bank account and the website that comes out in two days time I think it's the 2nd of March and that's thirty pound. Like, oh, what do I gonna do? What am I gonna do? So in the end, I deleted. I closed the website, and I just opened up a blogger, a blogger a website, a free one, and I've just embedded the podcast into that. Just the the standard Jason Newland free hypnosis podcast. Uh, so that you can listen to all the updated stuff on there. It's still the same, jasonnewland.com, but there's none of the other stuff, none of the other pages, nothing. That's all gone. Um, so that's just one one change that I made. Uh, there wasn't anything else that I could really reduce because all the the podcasts that I've got are there for a purpose and because everything's becoming more popular and more established I don't want to start deleting stuff you know I like the idea of yeah okay so there's a hundred and now 103 let me bore you to sleep recordings 
but I don't want to delete 50 of them so that I can, you know, keep on a lower tariff and pay less a month. So, I, so you only have the, the last 50 to listen to. Because then those 50 are gone. You know, it's nice. I think it's nice to have that option to listen back to number five or number 22 if you want to. You know? That's how I see it. So, this is yet another boring, 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 boring thing. Thank you for listening. I will probably do another boring session tomorrow. And I did do a Deep Sleep Whisper number 57, I think it was, today, earlier on. Uh, So that was pretty good, I think. And uh, again, thank you for all your support. And thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And thank you for being groovy. And I will speak to you next time. Bye.